Hello, welcome back. I felt inspired to make this video because I've been reflecting on what is now nearly four and a half years as a programmer. And in this video, I wanna talk about things that I wish I knew at the start of my journey. Things which took me by surprise. This one's gonna be an encapsulation of my experiences, everything I've learned, mistakes I've made, things I wish I knew at the start, and things I did well as well, so. Yeah, and I'm not really scripted it, so I'm just gonna kind of free ball. So yeah, let's get stuck into it. I mean, I already made a video about how I learned to code. I did it in my 30s, and I started in January or February 2020, then got a job 11 months later in 2021. So I've already made a video of that, so you can watch that if you want. But this is about from then to now, everything that's happened. So let's rewind to, I think it was like March or February 2021. I got offered the job for a WordPress developer in between handing in my notice in my marketing advertising job to start in this web developer job. The manager sent me a big list of stuff I needed to learn. So it was like loads of object oriented stuff, JavaScript, jQuery I had to learn. And the biggest one was PHP. I knew no PHP. So four weeks before this job, I was cramming PHP so hard. I was probably studying for about eight hours a day, like seven hours a day, just like jQuery, PHP, JavaScript, just trying to like soak in as much as I could. I was just so eager and so keen to impress. And I was, there's a lot of imposter syndrome there as well. But the big thing for me was the PHP side because I'm going into a job that I don't know this language. Um, it was like a front end job, but also a little bit of back end with WordPress. I started the job, they sent me my laptop and I'll never forget the first day looking at the code base because it was, it was massive. I freaked out, I, was, I had a melt, meltdown because I was reading it and I just, there was so much I didn't understand. Yeah, so they left me with the code base for like two days just to go through it and just to like familiarize myself with this code base. I don't think that in hindsight that was a good thing for them to do because I was just, I was just thinking I just don't know a lot of this code. It's gonna be very difficult for me. Anyway, so I start the job and it's the, chillest job the manager was so supportive and he just kept giving me like small bite-sized tasks to do and my one bit of advice first of all you're gonna help yourself out so much by learning the tools that you're gonna learn on a day-to-day -day basis for example if you're a programmer git github bitbucket <laughs> my my start for this job was so much harder because i was just not really that good at git i, I was just struggling to pull things and push things and yeah, like if I go, go back now, I would, I would focus on what are the key tools that you're gonna use every single day in your job. Just get really good at those. Like for example, with me, it was Git. The team was growing a lot, so this was in 2021, so it's obviously a massive tech boom. So they hired, I think like five or six people. And yeah, we were all designing sites, but they were all juniors and we had one manager who was a senior. So it was like loads of like kids running around, throwing stuff around. You know, I'd talk to some other devs and we'd be like, do you know how this works? And he'd be like, no, I don't know how that, that works. Do you know how this works? No, no, no. But anyway, I'm enjoying this job. Um, but probably the second mistake I make is that I had a really heavy case of imposter syndrome. They would give us a chance to work on new projects, but I was just so paranoid that I might get found out or might get sacked uh, or fired, whatever, because I just wasn't up to the level. So instead of just pushing yourself and challenging yourself and learning new things, which I do now, and which I'd encourage anyone to do. I was just, I had the mindset that like, if I do take on this new technology and I'm just not good enough or I'm holding the project back, that the company might sack me. So then I became a bit more fearless and just started to take on new skills and put my hand up for project. And this was a really big mindset like shift for me where I was like, all right, this company are paying me to learn. So I'm just gonna start learning and I'm gonna put my hand up for things which might be a little bit out of my skilled knowledge, but who cares, let's go for it. So 
As soon as I adopted that mindset, I started improving a lot, but it took me a while. Thank you to Scrimba for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So I basically learned React with Scrimba a couple of years ago. I think it was like 2021, and I use it every day in my job now. They got in touch with me because they just released version two of the platform. They gave me some logins, and I've been playing around with it for the last week, and it is really cool. So this is Scrimba. They've just updated to version two, which is a lot quicker, and they're updating their React course with React 19 here, and also they're adding a lot more AI content. But the cool thing about Scrimba is that you can be watching a tutorial like this, so I can play this tutorial, but you can pause it and experiment with the code. I can write whatever I want here. And this is how you learn coding, by experimenting, trying new things. Now, most of the content on Scrimba is free, but the pro plan's really good. You get access to the AI engineer career path and also the front-end developer career path as well with MDN. There's a link in the description that'll get you 30% off for the first few weeks you see this video. And after that, it'll be 20% off. So I was in the job about 10 months and I just felt I just wasn't coding enough. I was putting websites live. I was playing around with WordPress a lot. I wanted to be a digital nomad. So I was based in Manchester working remotely, but I wanted to be traveling and traveling around the world. And the company were kind of re relatively open to it, but I knew that I could probably earn more money elsewhere. I could be coding all day elsewhere. And I wanted somewhere that was remote first that allowed me to travel the world. So I started applying for new jobs, had a few interviews, and I was looking for a big pay rise. I was looking to work with React and maybe a bit of backend as well, full stack. I wanted to go into the more software development, software engineering space to work with apps, not WordPress basically. And I wanted somewhere where I can travel the world with, but had an interview with an AI startup. So this ended up being my second job and my third pretty big mistake, I'd say. So the job basically ticked a lot of the boxes, but I just got a very weird energy from the CTO. And it's hard to describe, but I just, I just had a gut feeling that I think he, this guy could be quite hard to work for, or I just felt I could have issues with him. Completely ignored this. They offered me like a 40% pay rise that I could work anywhere in the world, working with a modern tech stack. So I just accepted it. I, I basically ignored this feeling I had and just accepted the job. And this was my biggest mistake in tech. And the first six months of this job went really well. So I was traveling a lot. I went to Cape Town, Lisbon, Thailand. So I'm a blast learning React. I was learning loads about software engineering. And the two guys in my team were like 15 to 20 years experience. So I was learning loads from them. Um, and I was making a Microsoft Teams app, which was really cool. Like I've never worked on that platform before. So I was learning about that and picked it up really quick. Now this job was advertised, they wanted someone with three years experience. I had eight months experience. So we talked about this at the interview and they said they were fine with it and that they'll train me. This just never happened. And they basically, if I had any skills gap, rather than saying, okay, we'll support you with this, we can help you. It was like, okay, we need to get this product out. So you've got to learn it as soon as possible. And I think with a lot of AI startups, they want to get the product out as soon as possible at the detriment of their own staff. So the, the amount of pressure they were putting me under, and it got to a point where I was in Thailand, I remember I was in Bangkok, and I was waking up, I'd start work at about 4 p.m. each day, but there was just so much work that I was starting at about like 12, just to keep up with what they were giving me. Also, there was no project manager, there was no uh, UX people, so I was doing all the UX, no UX experience and I was like building up these components. There was just a lot of the structure that you need for a successful software team was just not there. And they wanted to get the product out as soon as possible. So it was really straining the relationships internally. And it just got to the point where I just wasn't enjoying coding anymore. When I first started programming, I just loved, I was like the awe of programming. I loved it and I loved like geeking out on learning new technology. And this job, they basically just sucked the life out of it with the pressure they were putting me under. I, I quit, so I quit the job. Or oh, we mutually terminated it. Had a break, so I was in Thailand, I went to Bali and had some time off and then slowly got back, geeking out on coding again. Programming and learning new stuff and just fell in love with coding again. I then got home, went back to the UK and was learning, did loads of leak code, just grinded leak code data structures and algorithms. 
and had maybe had like three months off. And I think in that three months, I was just learning so much, learned so much about JavaScript, a little bit about Python, and then started applying again. All right, so if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this. I'd say at the start of your career, particularly for the first two or three years, it's gonna take you time to learn stuff, to get to a level where you're confident at, and to get a level where you can meaningfully contribute to a company. And I'd just be very intentional and very careful with the companies that you choose in that period because you're in very high quit territory. And that is it. So if you found some value in this, subscribe, like the video. And four years, I still can't believe how quickly it's gone. But uh, I'll be making more videos about this and my experience in programming, tech, being digital nomad. So if that sounds fun, follow along if you want. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.